So, back before I deconverted from Christianity, I um, I read the Bible, and as I read through it, uh, I came across many questions that. I never really got a satisfactory answer to. I'm just going to present you with one of those questions now. And for that question, we go to the Bible. We go to the New Testament. Matthew, if you uh, care to follow along. Matthew 18, 18. Um, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, let me back up just to give that some context. Uh, he's talking about here um, sin specifically within the church, um, I believe is the case. Uh, he goes on with the parable uh, previous to that statement, uh, How think ye if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety-nine and goeth into the mountain and seeketh that which has gone astray? And, He's alluding to um, fellow members of the church that have lost their way. But he does go on to say um, that you should approach that person in private, and if that doesn't work to resolve your issue, you should bring a couple of other people to at least witness what's going on and maybe, I guess, give their input. Um, I, I don't know. It doesn't get very specific there. Uh, but if that doesn't work, you go to the church and so on and so forth. So I think maybe what they're saying is that uh, if the church forgives this person, they will be forgiven in heaven uh, for whatever sin was you know, committed against one of their brethren. But this raises a question. I mean, I mean, it says, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye ye shall loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. Now, is this an example of God saying to his followers, do what you will, and let your peers judge you for it, and whatever your peers judge is right, I will consider right in heaven. Because if that's the case, it, it kind of seems like God is leaving the rules of heaven up to, well, sinful man, since none of us are without sin, right? So, obviously then, sinful man would have control over at least some small aspect of the, the rules or laws of heaven. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. Another way is that uh, he was only talking to the righteous church so that no matter what it was that they decided, it would have already been something that God was going to decide anyway because they arrived at the same righteous conclusion that he did. And if that's the case, why even put this passage in here? Why even include something like that? Because that's really just him fucking with you. He's saying, yeah, whatever you decide is cool with me up here, as long as I already decided it. I don't know. Just one of those questions I had when I was deconverting that was never satisfactorily answered for me. And just to... to Give it full context. Uh, I'll go on. And uh, Matthew eighteen nineteen, he says, um, Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. 
So again, he, it seems like he's saying that a consensus of sinful man will dictate some sort of state in heaven. Now, what sense does that make? I mean, didn't Jesus come down here and suffer to relieve us of the burden of our sin? And yet here he is saying at the same time that even though you were under the burden of sin, as all men are, two or more of you can change the rules. <laughs> I mean, really? Is it that easy? Well, shit, I've got a condo in heaven then. <laughs> I mean, seriously. It, it, I, I'm sure there are much, much more serious ways of looking at it. I'm sure somebody has thought out a million apologetics for it. Um, and the mental gymnastics are probably quite impressive. But this particular passage, and again, Matthew uh, eighteen twenty, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So, what is it, just a name dropping exercise? <laughs> Some perspective might be helpful. It might just cloud the issue, depending on who that perspective is coming from. But um, anyone else ever read this passage and gone, excuse me, what? Anyway, that's it.